Good morning. I am Connie Malier, and I'm the chair of the Management and Internal Services Committee, and this is our meeting for Tuesday, February the 9th. Thank you for your attendance. I um, want to call to order and begin with a prayer, if you'll bow your heads with me, please. Lord, thank you so much for this day, and thank you for the blessings we have, including the right to assemble and to govern ourselves. Help us as we make decisions today that affect our neighbors and our county and our community and, and the citizens. Some of these decisions are not easy, but please be with us to make sure that we make these decisions based on fairness and in truth. Amen. Please join me for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. God. We have a quorum this morning and um, would like to ask for approval for the minutes of the January 12th meeting. So moved. Second. Um, approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions or changes? Not to my knowledge, Madam Chair. Gentlemen? All right. Second. A second. A second. Um, let's see. I don't see that we have any presentations this morning and nothing on the consent agenda, so let's move directly into debate. Mr. Johnson, what do you have for me this morning? First item for your consideration this morning is a service agreement with Project Access. Uh, this is a budgeted item. Uh, we've been working with Project Access for many years. Uh, this provides uh, medical care and uh, prescription drugs to the, the folks that need it in Columbia County that are unable to pay for it. Otherwise, the amount for this is $25,000 and staff recommends approval. We've done this for the last couple of years. Is We've actually done this for many years. We had them we had them come in every other year or so to give the, the board an update on their numbers. Uh, we do let them uh, have them give us their numbers to see how many people are being served in Columbia County. Um, if you'll remember last year, it's not a tremendous amount of people, but it's a, it's a group of people that would be completely unserved were it not. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that Richmond County participated in this in the past. I don't know if they're still participating in it or not, uh, but we're still comfortable with the agreement moving forward. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Next. Uh, the next item for your consideration is the change of our commission meeting uh, from April the 6th to March 30th. Um, as you know, that's uh, the time during the Masters. Typically, we would look at moving that meeting because a lot of people would be out of town uh, or otherwise uh, tied up. So staff recommends that the April 6th, 2021 commissioner meeting be moved to March the 30th. It will still be held here in the auditorium at 6 p.m. Move to consent. Second. Uh, this will move to our consent agenda. Yes, that's fine. Yes. Next. Uh, we'll get Sean to come up to present this next one. A lot of red, a lot of red type in this one, Sean. <coughs> well, it had to be done. Um, the next item for your consideration is resolution twenty one zero one, amending the bylaws of the LEPC. Um, basically, the long and the short of it is hasn't been rewritten since nineteen ninety nine, and there was a lot to do. Uh, the biggest takeaways for y'all is that. Y'all get to appoint one member each um, of the 30 members, and we took it from an all-hazards approach to, or from a um, strictly hazmat approach to an all-hazards approach so we can get more of the community involved and get more industry and whatnot to have their input to, to see how we can benefit each other during, um, during emergencies. So uh, staff recommends approval of Resolution 2101. Any comment or question? No, I read through, it was a lot of changes. Yes, sir. I, I didn't like the way it was written before. Move to consent. Second. Thank you. So moved. Um, let's see, internal services. Yes, my first item is the annual bank accounts that we always present for your information and approval. This just lists all of the current bank accounts that we have that are under the control of the Board of Commissioners with the current signers for them. So there's no real action to take, it's just information? Um, we do ask that you approve them. I think, Patrice, don't we have to? Yes. Yeah. This, this is good approved. I move to consent. Second. So moved. Next. If you recall back when we were having the audit presentation and Ms. Bonnie Cox was here, she mentioned that we had a new accounting standard that we were going to have to implement this year that would require some software. This is that item now. It's the purchase of lease accounting software. <clears throat> The standard is requiring that we account for leases much like we do 
capital assets. We have to show them either as an asset or a liability. We have to amortize them. We have a lot of note disclosures. It's quite a complicated standard to implement, and therefore it is requiring the purchase of lease accounting software. I did demo, along with IT, several different companies, and based on our review, lease query is the one that best fits the needs for our county. The initial cost of this is $14,640. That does include training, implementation. They will actually enter some of our leases for us to establish some base templates, templates for me to follow. And then each year after that, the cost will be $7,140. That's based on a maximum of 85 leases. <coughs> That was my question, 80, that, how many do we have? We only currently have recognized about 35, so that gives us room for growth. Never fun to put. No. Mm. Move to consent. Second. So moved. That's me. That would be <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, the item you have before you today is terms and conditions and supporting documents related to uh, broadband's relationship with Sienna, who's the manufacturer of our network switches. Um, as part of that relationship with Sienna, they also provide maintenance and network operation center support. And that's, let me say NOC, that's network operation center. Um, but NOC support is one of the more critical elements of our broadband network. Basically, it's like a an ongoing doctor's appointment or, or where they're constantly getting vital signs from our network to make sure that it's running efficiently. So it is uh, highly critical to what we do and support our customers. Um, uh, with the new switches that we have, we need to do a new agreement. And so the, uh, the proposal that I have from, uh, from Siena is for a four-year agreement for a grand total of $538,989.32. Um, that's about, uh, well, the NOC is the most expensive component of that at about $89,000 a year. Uh, maintenance is roughly about 41000 of that. What do we spend now? What we spend now is, uh, in total, about 42000 A year. A year. The difference here is that we have two completely different sets of equipment. Equipment that we have in our uh, POP right now, I'm sorry, not in the POP, but at all of our network nodes is nine years old. Um, the capacity of that equipment is 10 gigabit. Um, the new equipment that we have, uh, will implement it at 100 uh, because that's a, a limitation that we have because of the rest of the network. It's capable of 200. So we've got a lot of room for expansion. So what we're really doing is uh, it, it's difficult to compare the price of these because you're comparing a, you know, like a 1982 Chevy C10 pickup with a 2011 F350 Lariat Dually. So they can, they can tow a, a heavy load. So it's not really much of a comparison there. So I hope we're not buying a 2011 here. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a price increase um, per <clears throat> year. Uh, it's about 100000 in year one because there are some setup fees associated with it, and then it um, averages out to about 80000 in the subsequent years. So we're doubling our cost. Yes, sir, we are. And it, are we still managing two different systems? Two different. When I say systems, two different. No, I sir. I thought I heard you say was we were the still. The first set of switches will go away. So we're doubling our price just by changing the switches. But we have twice as many switches. That's one of the ways we're enhancing the network is we've got 14 switches right now. Those will go away. They'll be replaced by 28. In essence, at each of our network nodes, we have a primary and then we're going to have a secondary so that if there's ever a problem with one, it'll automatically fail over to the other. So. Again, that's part of the increase in price is that we have a much more robust and dependable network. Uh, do, we have, do we have failures now? Uh, we've had, was it a, we don't have failures necessarily, but the, the network operation center does, how many have we had they've, they've been called in on? There's, there's different levels of outage so I mean the outage can be catastrophic where nothing is passing um, or it can be less than that uh, where one of the functions that the knock does is they can take corrective action when they see an issue so they can they can make it such that the equipment continues to work that still requires one of those tickets that Harold's referring to 
So there's outages occurring all the time. Severity, or it depends on what, what would happen. Um, but the knock services are absolutely critical. That's a that's a 24 by 7, 365 service. So there's always they're always getting those readouts from the network, um, and then they have times time standards that they have to meet in order to keep those systems active. So um, you know to stand up our own knock because you have to, you have to have a network operation center to run a network, especially a transport network like broadband. And uh, to do our own would be, you know, that'd be a minimum of five people associated equipment we exceed the 89,000. So the switches are coming. We right. have them. We have them. Here. They have. They'll be implemented within, I guess, in, in March is what Those we're Those ones we bought in the summer, right? Scott? Yes, sir. Is that right? Correct. This cost already in the budget? Uh, it's not in the budget but it is available in um, Herald's or in Broadband's uh, contingency or operating contingency. So we're gonna transfer that to his contract services and it'll be budgeted as part of the regular budget going forward. Right. A lot of money. It is. It is. Money. This is a good problem to have though, because it's a symbol of a growing county and a growing network that, that we had to take this step. The old equipment was at end of life anyway. We had already received notice that it was end of life, which means that if it was to go out then we were going to have to get parts on the flat market or, <laughs> or hope and pray eBay. we could get it on eBay. Been there, done that. So the, the fact that we've got the new equipment now, it does come with this additional cost, but at the end of the day, we do have a robust network and we can deal with the additional customers that we're going to be bringing on as part of the, the WCTEL arrangement that uh, the commission last year. So it, it, it is an expense. It's something that we unfortunately but fortunately need to do to accommodate the growth that we're expecting move to consent second so moved what's next anything else on <clears throat> anything else for you mr blanchard not till we get to the staff reports no ma'am all right um do we have any legal matters speaking of legal matters i did see last night that uh, i guess with pinellas county somebody hacked into the water system and tried to tried to change the you know, the chemicals in the water system to make it yep. poison. So that was caught my attention. So I'm gonna make sure you take care of that. <laughs> the news is they caught it. I'm I'm in regular conversations <clears throat> with the people that operate our, our water utility systems. Another scary current event you'd like to no, share? No, that <laughs> took the cake. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Um staff reports, county manager. Uh, the first item you have is just our report on our personnel savings for this year. As you can see, we've not only met it, but we've almost doubled it, uh, uh, exceeding it by $349,000 for a total of $699,105. Uh, and as we discussed previously, we're going to be reviewing all these positions as we go through the budget process this year. These positions have been open for a long time. Let's see if there's a way we can either reclassify those positions or do away with them totally uh, to, to try to figure out how we can best maximize our efficiency numbers through today or they're through the end of january end of these numbers should be for the end of i believe is it say february the 8th on there okay yeah as of february the 8th and just for the record it's not a good thing no it's not i don't even like to call it savings i mean it's yeah it's not it's not a good i mean it is it's budgeted money that we're not having to spend but it's, it's also good, but things that we're not getting done you know or people are having to work you know, twice as hard or filling gaps. I'd love to have all of our positions full. Skinner, <clears throat> any comments, questions? Uh, no, not right. this time. Internal <clears throat> services? <clears throat> yes, the first item for your review is the year to date budget report. This is for the month ended January 31st. We should be operating around 58%. As is customary, I've listed some of the main funds on the recommendation sheet for your review. Everyone is operating well within their budgets. Uh, splash update. The next item is the sales tax update. This is through the month of December. All time we, high, isn't it? I'm sorry? All time high? Yes, this is the largest check we have received to date. And I did redo the schedules to take out that payment we received back in August 
um, for that audit and moved it to the bottom. So our actual annualized percentage increase, not including that payment, is 14.79%. Keep up the good work. I'll try. Then the final item is the investment report, just for your review. I have no questions. Just so you know, I do, real quick on the investment report, uh, Ms. Priest and I are in discussions. We are actively looking uh, for places to place money because uh, the right now the, the returns are extremely low. I notice we've got a lot with the Georgia One Fund. I mean, We have a lot with the Georgia One Fund because right now a lot of banks don't want cash. We've actually had banks turning down cash, um, and, and some of these... Some of these banks are paying, uh, we, we had one, uh, even Georgia one is like 0.06. It is, and so we're looking to move that money. We have 30, well, I, I won't say, we have we have a significant amount of money that uh, we need to, to move around, and we're actively looking. So we, we, we moved some last week uh, with, with a relationship with a new bank that gave us a really good rate, and we were able to move some money there, and we're actively looking to invest some more money. But I wanted to make everybody aware of that fact. Uh, but we have, I actually had two banks last week uh, say that they would take our money, but they would prefer that we not place it there. All right. We have an internal um, policy that caps how much we put with any one institution. Yes. Yeah, we do. We can't do more than 50% of our entire portfolio right. with any one institution. That's still a lot. That is a lot. But you can see it's pretty diversified, and the fact that we you know, bring this to you every single month. It gives you an opportunity to look at that and give us your input, um, especially with, you know, when we have accountants and bankers and business people on the commission. I mean, an extra eye is good to see. So you can bring anything to either my attention or Ms. Reese's attention that you see that we need to address. Or if you hear of any places with good rates. <laughs> but the Georgia One Fund is just a, it's, it's, it's a depository for all right. governments, and it's, you know, a lot of, lot of people. There's a lot of money there. Banker? No, but that is true. Banks do not want your money. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> ones that do want your money might be a little scary to think. <laughs> all right. It's all insured. Having, uh, having no uh, questions on the internal services report, we now go to the technology. Uh, this is the, the quarterly staff report for uh, Broadband Utility. Um, I've provided for you the, the revenue that we have so far this year, the balance sheet, and then uh, our our key contributors, our customers that are, are providing the uh, revenues to us. Uh, so you have that there for your consideration. Uh, did want to draw your attention to the, the bottom of the page. Um, we're taking in uh, over 11000 a month right now from our relationship with WCTEL and, and ATG, those are business partners. That was the, uh, the IRU I referred to earlier. Um, the beginning of this year, I think we were only getting about 3000 ish from that, so we've seen a significant increase there. Um, and then at the very bottom, you see we've got three businesses lined up plus an additional 98 homes are signed up for eventual installation. So that's taking place you know, as we speak, adding customers on that. Was WCTL being aggressive getting out in the areas? Uh, they are. Um, in fact, uh, my uh, my pastor was one of the people that was on the, the this last batch that went live and mentioned it in his sermon on Sunday. Oh, so <laughs> from literally from uh, our lips to God's ears on that one. But um, WCTEL uh, has been working very well with Harold, and ATG is also a part of that as well to expand their footprint. Expecting a lot bigger things. This is good. We expect better. Questions? Um, do we have any public comment? Bob, how are Bob? you today? Good morning. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on up here so we can hear you. Um, yeah, we uh, we hosted an automotive competition for the three Columbia County high schools. They brought out 21 students to in three levels of competition, and uh, really just really blessed at how it went off. Uh, the impact in the community, 
I received calls Friday afternoon from industry partners, um, also two on Saturday and one Sunday afternoon. Uh, two young men I found out are going for job interviews at a dealership. So it was a huge impact, a huge success, I believe, and uh, a lot of credit needs to be given to the whole service division and then the services that put it. And Cassidy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank it you. Is. Thank you. Oh. Just to add to that, you know, this was something that, that we did last year when when we met with all of our divisions and challenged them to come up with what we call an, what called an impact project, something that was going to positively impact the community and internal services headed out of the park. All the other divisions are working on impact projects as well. But this one now, it, it, like you see, it already has an impact to the community, but they're already talking about what we can do next year to make it even bigger, um, which is which is great. And this is... The great thing about this is we have a lot of staff time, a lot of effort uh, by the entire division and other people that help with this, but there wasn't a tremendous amount of cost from the county, and that was the challenge in the very beginning, was to come up with something that's going to impact our community in a positive way that's not going to cost the county a lot of money. And I just can't brag on our staff enough, internal services, for what they did for their project, the other divisions that are doing their projects now. You're going to see 10 individual projects uh, that, that impact the community that way. Uh, as we move forward, and, and each one of them is going to continue to grow, which is great. So, great job. You guys did a good job. I will add that, like, with the industry that partnered with us this time, I think it ended up being, like, 24 uh, local automotive businesses from all different aspects of the automotive world. Um, some of the calls that I received were actually people who were jealous that they didn't get to partner with Columbia County. And so they're looking forward to next year and making it bigger and better. We appreciate y'all. Great job. Have the opportunity. Thank you. Everybody, thank thank you for bringing that up, Richardson. That's you know, do do we know which one will be which project will be? Well, they're all ongoing, uh, and you've heard a little bit uh, from them. But I'll I'll give you an update. Uh, I'll get you an update on on all the impact projects and where we are with the impact projects. Any other Bob? Yes, the public has a comment. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Come here now. Tell us your name and address for Bob the Bob Seven Forty One Royal Springs Lane. Uh, so I'm wondering what, I heard you say, Mr. Johnson, you'd love to have all the positions filled. I'm wondering, I don't know as a public person uh, what efforts are made to recruit or interface with sort of the impact or where we post these jobs, how, how we make sure we have public uh, opportunities. Yeah, so so we, we post in all the traditional places that, that you would you would think, and then we, we target industries depending on the job. So. Um, if it's, uh, for example, right now we have an HR job open, so we're actually targeting the Society of Human Resources Professionals. We're uh, targeting uh, GLGPA, which is Local Government Professionals Association, um, uh, targeting some other industries. Same thing with our engineering jobs. We target engineering, um, uh, uh, the, these groups that, that are uh, like the Georgia Professional Society of Engineers and those sort of places. So we, we try to target them. Uh, I think the problem right now is is, is that the market is just it's just so tough, uh, and we do have a lot of positions where we have a lot of turnover in, in, in positions that pay between twelve and fifteen dollars an hour because uh, there are a lot of people that are choosing just to not work as opposed to coming to work for that amount of money. So that's the challenge, uh, but we do target industry when we put jobs out. Any other public comment? That could have been my first one in six years. Sir, public comment. That could have been my first one in six years. Oh, yeah. I'm Good glad job, to Bob. Good to Thank hear you, from Bob. folks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any um, items on my agenda for executive session. For this. So if there's no other business, I'll, uh, I will adjourn, and we'll be back in three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> Short. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be...
I'd like to call uh, to order the uh, plan, uh, proposed uh, Development Planning Service Committee. Uh, we've already had the invocation at the prior meeting and the pledge. We have a full quorum uh, and entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion carried. Next on the agenda, uh, we don't have, uh, well, we need to approve the agenda. Second. All right. Agenda approved. Uh, we don't have any uh, presentations that I'm aware of. Kind of a simple meeting this morning. We'll go straight to the debate agenda. Uh, I am concerned about this first item <laughs> on the agenda. Uh, no more so than I. <laughs> Obviously haven't done a background check. Yeah, yeah. All right, the first item I have for your consideration is alcohol beverage license for Columbia County Board of Commissioners doing business as Columbia County Performing Arts Center. Uh, of course, Board of Commissioners, you all are doing business as Columbia County Performing Arts Center has applied for a beverage, alcohol beverage license to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits on premise at the 4550 Market Street. All the application has been applied. Uh, the, the site has been posted. So staff recommends approval of the license. I always ask, and I know that seems like a silly question for this particular venue. Have there been any comments from the public? Any neighbors' concerns? None. None. I don't think I can vote on this, can I? <laughs> you have to. You, the, there's actually listed in the application an operating manager, which is right. Matt Jamison, not the Board of Commissioners. So you're proving him. He's the one that's in the background check and the fingerprinted. So. Move to consent. consent. It can go to consent. consent. Move to consent. All right. We'll move on. Uh, any uh, legal matters? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll move uh, forward to uh, staff reports. All right. Attached uh, to your backup is the January 21 Planning Department Workload Measurement and Monthly Report. Uh, it's uh, submitted as information only and no further action is required. Answer any questions you may have. Have any questions on that? Yeah. For the next item. Uh, also attached is the December 2020 uh, planning, review, planning Review Workload Monthly Report. It's attached for information only. I can answer any questions you might have about that. It, it is. It's, um, you know, in spite of the uh, pandemic, we were still quite busy. And, uh, you know, I think you saw that with the numbers from development services that weren't really down per se. And in fact, we were up a little bit in commercial. So I think that's indicative of uh, plan review, making sure that we got those uh, applications through. Okay. Questions? Okay. Move forward to uh, development services, number two. All right, the first one we have is the 2020-21 um, uh, development service monthly report, and a uh, copy of that report is uh, attached for your uh, information. And I have, I'll answer any questions you have. You can see that uh, all things are up. You know, things are moving ahead. Uh, sort of tailing in on what Scott said, you know, workload is up. We're, we're moving along quite well. The county is blessed, so, and no further action is required on that. For keeping up. Questions on that? Comments? Yeah. Next item. All right. The next one we have is the 2021 January financial report, and a copy of that is attached for your information. No further action is required. All right. Questions? All right. Move forward. All right. The last one we have is the temporary alcohol permits, and we had none in the month of January. First time that's happened in the seven years that I've been down here. Any comments, questions? Yeah. Just, Mr. Chairman, if I may, real quick, uh, just a quick reminder for everybody, um, both on committee, committee as well as in the public, that we are in the middle of the uh, public review comment period for the uh, Vision 2035 Comprehensive Plan update. Uh, this is basically the last chance to get in your uh, two cents on where the uh, direction of that document is headed. Uh, just a quick reminder that'll head to um, 
the Planning Commission for a public hearing here shortly in March, then to uh, this committee, excuse me, to the BOC for a uh, resolution to send off to DCA for their review and blessing before it finally comes back to full approval by the Board of Commissioners, and that'll occur all before uh, June 1st. But just a quick reminder, it's online, it's on the county website, you can go in there. It does actually have the ability for you to go in and pin comments, and so we will receive those in real time and be able to either take those under advisement or uh, if there are specific issues or questions that we can answer immediately, we can respond and uh, get those back to the uh, person that has made those comments. So just wanted to point that out so that you uh, can pass that along to all your constituents. Okay. That is correct, but it's not public to everybody. It will be public to the two, three administrators that are uh, viewing that. Thanks for that information. Comments, issues, uh, or the public? Okay. Uh, don't have any item for executive session, so we will adjourn. Quick enough, huh? All right.